The face of Judith, I think, is one of the most beautiful, arresting faces in, in all of Caravaggio. I think it really is the anchor of the whole painting. It's the thing that, that makes me totally convinced that uh, this is a picture of the Naples period by Caravaggio that uh, likely corresponds in date to the seven works of mercy and pictures like that. But what really strikes me every time I've seen this picture is how strong that face is and how much it differs from the Palazzo Barberini painting that's painted around 1599. Because in that painting, as you remember, Judith looks surprised that she's done this horrible deed. She looks like she doesn't want to get blood on her dress, that she's finding herself in a role that she can't really handle, but miraculously, God is working through her and she's able to do it, but she's completely baffled by the, the entire experience. Well, this Judith is totally determined confident, she understands her role, she's defiant, uh, she's powerful, she's completely in control of the situation and has this stern look on her face. The servant in the early picture seems somewhat caricatured, somewhat commedia dell'arte looking, to be compared to uh, the servant in the supper at Emmaus at the Brera. This must be a picture of the summer of 1606, probably. In Caravaggio, there's this huge contrast between youth and old age that he wants to bring about, to emphasize. The red curtain is a tour de force in this picture. The kind of knot that he's created and the way everything moves uh, vertically and somewhat horizontally, it makes you think of the curtain in The Death of the Virgin, uh, and in some of the other pictures, but maybe this one is even the greatest, the greatest of the background curtains in, in Caravaggio's picture. It's absolutely virtuosic in the way it, it has this deep color, but also beautiful shadows, and it has this volumetric quality where the nodding is. Uh, I think it really goes a long way to creating a kind of shallow space, almost a kind of a shallow theatrical space, uh, and then the color contrasts are really important. The blacks and the reds, you know, this wonderful uh, kind of chromaticism uh, palette that you get in the late pictures that are different from the early works. I think it's a somewhat experimental picture uh, of the Naples period. You have to remember that Caravaggio's fled from Rome after the murder of Tomassoni, and he has a whole new culture, audience, uh, his patrons, are now different people, different churches, different collectors. And my theory has always been that he felt very free from Rome and everything that's Roman and Roman tradition and the cutthroat competition that there was between him and Guido Reni and other people in Rome. And now that he's in Naples, I'm thinking he's freer to experiment. And there's a lot of experimentation in the Naples period. The Seven Acts of Mercy, I'm quite sure, is not a painting he would have done in Rome. Or if he had a commission like that, I think he would have done it in a different way. I mean, you do have experimental pictures like the Madonna di Loreto in Rome. And that's, for me, the key work is the Madonna di Loreto that launches him uh, into being able to do certain things like the Supper of Emmaus and the Brera and the Seven Works of Mercy in the Naples period. But he experiments with the faces, especially the head of Holofernes, a brutality and a kind of, a, a kind of vulgar almost uh, crudeness in the head of Holofernes here is an experimental face, not of the kind of the classic faces of the, of the Roman period. So when he goes to Naples, I think lots of things are possible and he's exploring new things and then he becomes very experimental in Malta yet again, the period that I've studied the most for 15 years or more, where the thinness of the paint flare using so much of the brown of the of the priming as the basic middle tones. Uh, when the Malta beheading was cleaned in Florence in the late 90s, we could see that it was really just highlights here and there on the hands, that the basic hand was the middle tone of, produced by the imprimitura from the priming. And everything else was just highlights surrounding the ground. That begins to happen here. This is still painted you know, pretty consistently 
pretty thoroughly, with a few places that are left more open, like the head, I think, of Holofernes and some of the bedding he uses, uh, some of the ground. But when he gets to Malta, perhaps because the beheading is such a huge picture, uh, that that inspired him to use a lot of the ground. I think it's also just an aesthetic thing that he discovered in Naples and that he continues that in Malta using so much of the ground. For me, the best part of the painting, the most surprising, brilliant part of the painting, besides the head of Judith and the red curtain, is the white drapery of the servant and the amazing kind of abbreviation and kind of geometricizing of certain features of her hands, her thumb with its dirty fingernail, the simplicity of the knuckles. There's a certain brutality there, but there's also something so human and intimate about it. We're up close to these hands, and they're hands that are gnarled and worked and kind of burnt by time. They have this sense of age and weathering. That economy of painting, the sureness, uh, the confidence of his painting and the whites throughout the painting, but especially in that area, are uh, some of the most brilliant passages in Caravaggio's Naples period paintings, it seems to me. They're absolutely spectacular.